بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك رب أن يحبرون تبرأت من حولي وقوتي واعتصمت بحول الله وقوته فلا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما إنك أنت العليم الحكيم uh, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome all again to uh, um, to another uh, class in our series knowing Allah knowing Him through His uh, beautiful names and today we have two names both related both from uh, both derived from the same root. Uh, with uh, different meanings, but meanings that are related. And the scholars who who commented uh, on the names of Allah and researched them always coupled them together. And they are Al-Ghani and Al-Mughni. Al-Ghani is the rich and Al-Mughni is the enricher. And so uh, there'll, be, we'll, there'll be overlap. We'll be talking about Al-Mughni when we're speaking about Al-Ghani, of course, uh, because of how closely related their meanings are. Uh, and how um, uh, they are, uh, uh, now they, they, their meaning is one essentially. One is a dis- uh, one is a uh, uh, one is an attribute of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's essence, and the other is an attribute of His afal of His uh, of His action. Uh, so, ghina, ghina, which is the root of al ghani, ghina is wealthiness, which is the state of uh, being rich and affluent, having plentiful supply of material goods and money. That's how we understand ghina, wealth. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani. And what he is, uh, his ghina, his uh, wealthiness or his richness uh, is of a different kind, a different nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of nobody. So uh, people who are rich don't need others. And we'll talk about that meaning uh, uh, soon. Uh, But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who is free of need. So uh, absolute self-sufficiency belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he needs nobody. Rather, everything needs Allah uh, for everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs nothing but is needed by everyone for everything. And that belongs to, uh, uh, and that quality belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Therefore, He is rich. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rich whether you believe in Him or whether you disbelieve in Him. Whether you, uh, uh, whether you have knowledge of Him or you are ignorant. Whether you accept or reject Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, or, or uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ إِن تَكْفُرُوا أَنْتُمْ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ And Musa said, if you should disbelieve, you and whoever is on the earth entirely, indeed Allah is al ghani He is the free of need and praiseworthy. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is in no need of people's belief to affirm His existence. And we're going to go on to that again soon. As for the creation, The creation's condition, the creation state, is neediness. That's our quality. Our quality is neediness. We need, uh, uh, we we need Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, of course, for everything. We need, uh, and we need, we our needs are endless. Uh, Nothing is more honourable than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala guiding you to recognising that your need, that, that you need him. Because what is, what is uh, rejection or what is misguidance? Or what, or how is it characterized? By people, by people assuming that they don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when people say statements, well, I'll be and seek refuge in Allah from such uh, beliefs, the statements such as um, God has become obsolete or God is dead, well, uh, they say such statements is because they don't realize their need they need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and humiliation is 
being in need of others, placing your hopes in others, assuming that your provision is granted to you by them. Ali radiallahu anhu was asked, what is humiliation? He said that the noble stand at the door of the mean, the mean like the miser, and, and, and the one who's nasty in nature. The, the honorable or the noble standing at the door of the miser, or, uh, uh, standing at the door of the mean, and then is turned away. Because that's people's nature. They may give once or twice, but then they'll stop. So the less you need uh, people, the more uh, elevated you are in their estimation, in their view, and the more dignified you are. The less you ask, the more people like you. The more you ask people, the less they like you. Uh, and that's why they say, uh, if you need somebody and you become their captive, uh, now need somebody and you become their captive, Free yourself of need from them, you become their equal. Give them and you become their master. But not a master who, who lords over them, okay, for having given them, but meaning that you are, that people are indebted to you. Although that should not be our objective, although from our share of Allah's name, Al-Mughni, the enricher, is that we enrich. Is that we enrich. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to give from what he has given us. Yes? So it wasn't ours to start with, and he has commanded us uh, to give. Al Hassan al Basri, radiallahu anh, from the uh, from the tabi'een, from the successors, and he's, yani the, the, the scholars the scholars differ as to who is the Sayyidu tabi'een, who is the master of the tabi'een, the greatest of the tabi'een, the successors of the companions, and uh, and the list is narrowed down to two: Al Hassan al Basri and Sa'id ibn al Musayyib. Al Hassan al Basri was asked, "How did you attain this lofty station?" He's, uh, he was, taban, he was a, a, a scholar of all of the sciences. He was an absolute mujtahid in his uh, uh, in his time, <coughs> and he said, "Listirna uh, ilidun uh, because of uh, because I have no need for people's dunya, wahajatihim uh, ila ilmi, and their need uh, and their need for my knowledge." So that is such a lofty station that you, that you only place, that you only need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't turn to the people, yes, and the people turn to you for their needs. That's a huge share of Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, Al-Ghani and Al-Mughni. Uh, because greed humiliates people. We're not talking about, um, we're not talking about applying for a job. We're not talking about going to somebody for a reference. We're not talking about um, we're not talking about seeking qualifications. We're not talking about asking for a promotion. We're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, going to the creation before going to the creator. The creation, everything in creation is a means. It's a means to our ends. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's the one who gives, from the meanings of Al-Mughni, is he gives uh, through means and without any means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you through the means and without any means. How so? Some people are geniuses, yet they live in poverty, in perpetual poverty. And some people are foolish, and they did not earn their money. They did, out of no effort of their own, they're wealthy. Okay, so who enriched this person? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did he enrich him through the means, meaning did that person, you know, work hard and sweat and bust themselves in order to, in order to obtain that wealth? No, no. And uh, I, I, I always mention this, um, I always mention this aphorism, uh, this hikmah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he enriches the fool to perplex the genius as to how his genius did not avail him. Not to say that we should not seek, uh, that we shouldn't seek, uh, uh, um, you know, specializations in in the in the in the worldly um, in worldly fields uh, of knowledge. No, that that's not the point. The point is to know that this knowledge is not what will is not the reason is not the the absolute uh, cause behind your enrichment. The absolute cause is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your knowledge is a means. Your boss at work is a means. 
The customer is a means. You have to market your product. You go to market with a product, okay? People aren't going to flock to you without you doing anything. So you, you have to go to the customer as well. Yes? But the customer didn't enrich you. The, 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 your boss didn't enrich you through that promotion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the enricher. Because if they were the means, if they were, uh, sorry, if they were the absolute cause behind your enrichment, then, then, uh, then the worldly causes are the true enricher. So why isn't every genius rich? That's the question. Why isn't every genius rich? Because it's one of the many means and it's not the absolute means behind, uh, behind wealth. <laughs> Now, uh, and they say, uh, need not what people have and they will love you. So don't, you know when you, when, when, as we said, the more you ask people, the more, they, the more they turn away from you. The less you ask them, the more they like you. If you have no needs, people like you. People love you. And desire what Allah has and he will love you. You see, that's op Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is of, yeah, to say Allah is different to us is the understatement of, of our existence, not just the century, of our whole existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to be asked. Human beings hate to be asked. Tayyib. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you're with Allah, you're rich. <coughs> the jurists uh, prohibit giving zakah to, uh, to uh, an impoverished child if their father is rich. If their father is a type, but what, we, what we're talking about. A child whose parents are divorced, okay, and uh, the child and, 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 and their mother live in abject poverty. Well, they, by the way, you don't have to be in abject poverty to qualify for zakah, but are, they're, they're poor. But his father is rich. Zakah can't be paid to him because he is rich by extension. Because his father is obliged to provide for him, for his own child, because and uh, uh, again, you know, th through our surgeries and uh, counseling sessions and, you know, and, 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 and fatwas, we, we always have to remind people that, uh, you know, divorced couples, and may Allah protect our marriages and all, and, and all marriages and protect the institution of marriage, which the reason why there is there's so much divorce is because the institution of marriage is, uh, uh, you know, is uh, under assault and under attack and has been eroded over the years and I don't know if you saw the uh, in the news uh, two days ago it's uh, uh, last year uh, or the yeah last year was the first time in British history or since records began anyway uh, when children uh, you know more than half of children have been conceived outside of wedlock you know and I remember the news commentator saying you know, how, why does this, you know, why does this qualify as news? How does this count as news? This isn't news. So, uh, you know, they have a different worldview and a different understanding of what family should be. Uh, in any case, <coughs> we remind people that with divorce, you no longer are spouses, but you're still, a hu you're still a father. You're still a father and you're still a mother. But people think divorce, I owe, her, I owe her nothing and I owe them nothing. And they disappear, up and leave, go somewhere, uh, you know. They'll even be within reach and uh, their children see nothing from them. So the child is rich by extension. He, because the child is an extension of their parents. So this child, the poor child, is an extension of his, of his, uh, of his uh, rich father. Taib, if we extend that metaphor to our subject today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ghani meaning that you're rich when you're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And does that mean that you are provided with material wealth in abundance to qualify as rich in accordance to the qualification, uh, in accordance to the, uh, the, 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 the definition of wealth uh, from, uh, from a material perspective? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, He gives you sufficiency. That's why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he said, indeed, uh, ghina is not kathratul ard, it's not having many possessions. Lakin al ghina, ghina al nafs. But wealthiness is the wealth of the soul, of the nafs. What, what does that mean? That you're content. There are rich, rich people who are never content. Why are you not content? Why are you not, or they're not satisfied? Because they're not content. They're not content. Um, 
my, my friend was uh, my friend was traveling uh, earlier this week and told us he sat next to somebody who was complaining of a spiritual void. He sat on the plane next to somebody who they got chatting and he said he's you know he's struggling and he has a spiritual void, but he's a person of of means. He's well to do, and he feels comfortable when he's in Muslim countries. So there's, there's something there and something to work on. May Allah subhanahu wa taala guide him. Yes. So Allah Allah subhanahu wa taala gives you that that feeling of wealth contentment satisfaction that you are uh, 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 that you make do with what you have and you see the little as a lot but there are people who see a lot as little some people who uh, some people who i'm sure every one of us must know one at least one person who when they sit down to dinner the whole table has to be full because they need to see they need to, because they, they eat with their eyes. They need to see that there's enough. There's a lot. Okay? In the end, they touch a little, they eat a little bit. Okay? Poke here and there, and the rest gets chucked away. طيب. So you're rich with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in the following verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pairs his name, Al Ghani, Al Ghani, with another one of his names, Al Hamid. Al Hamid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, O you who have believed, spend from the good things which you have earned and from that which we have produced for you from the earth and do not aim toward the defective therefrom. Don't, don't seek the defective, uh, 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 the defective items of your wealth. Spending from that while you would not take it except if you would close your eyes uh, and know that Allah is free of need. He's ghani and praiseworthy. Hamid. And a number of other ayat لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and earth. Indeed, Allah is free of need, the praiseworthy. Uh, among uh, a number of other ayat. Now, Hamid, <coughs> here we saw praiseworthy the, as a translation. Hamid corresponds to the scale fa'il. And fa'il in the Arabic language means either fa'il or maf'ul. It's either fa'il, which is the active Participle, uh, participle or maf'ul, uh, which is the object of the verb. So if we say, he uh, hamid, uh, meaning mahmud, maf'ul, corresponding to the scale maf'ul, it would mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praiseworthy, he's deserving of praise. Because he's ghani, he gives, and he's deserving of praise. If we were to say it means fa'il, so hamid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hamid bima'na, meaning hamid. That he praises, uh, and this is another meaning, uh, 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 an equal meaning. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, despite uh, you know, unlike His creation, He's rich, He's free of need, yet He appreciates the worship of His creation with the reward which, uh, which He gives them. W people, when they're f not absolutely free of need, but people who are rich, are not concerned with others. They do not. Uh, they do not. Uh, they they don't share people's. Um, they don't share people's concerns and worries or experiences, and therefore, they are not appreciative of their efforts. And and so, pe you know, there are many politicians and businessmen and who are out of touch, and they assume that they assume that the complaints of the, uh, the, 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 the underprivileged, the complaints of the destitute are just because they're a bit lazy. They don't work hard enough. Not understand, because they have no, they don't share any of their experiences. They don't understand that they don't have the opportunities. They don't have the access that they have. They don't have the contacts that they have. And that the, the volume of work that they put in an effort doesn't, is not, um, is not, uh, is not compensated uh, proportionately. Uh, as, they, as their effort is and actually they're compensated, they're overcompensated for their, for their efforts. And so they're not appreciative. They're not appreciative. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives and He is in no need of our worship. Yet He, uh, uh, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He appreciates, uh, He appreciates with the reward uh, in which he gives his servant, he appreciates his servant for the worship which they uh, perform. Now, uh, 
to not need anything is the first meaning which we've covered and that is exclusive to Allah. As Imam al-Ghazali he says, the really rich man is the one who does not need anyone at all. The one who is in need and at the same time possesses that which he needs is called rich figuratively. Yes, the one who's in need, you know, we're human beings, we're, we're in need. We need water and food and clothes and homes and we need security and we need uh, teachers and we need, uh, 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 and we need farmers. So we have needs. So the one who is in need and at the same time possesses that which he needs is called rich, but not absolutely, only figuratively speaking. This, he says, this meaning, this possession of what one needs is the utmost form of riches attainable by one other than Allah. To have everything that you need is the utmost form of riches uh, 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 only in relation to humans. That meaning complete independence, is inconceivable, which is uh, to have no need at all. That complete independence is inconceivable except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people have, and this is the second meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, al-ghani, is having, uh, having few needs. Or we'll move from, uh, uh, you know, that, that leads us on to the second meaning, which is to have few needs. So, to add on to what Imam uh, Rahimahullah he said, there are people who are in need but have everything that they need. They're called rich but only figuratively speaking. Okay, but even those people who have everything that they need fall ill. They fall ill. Yes. Their wealth cannot deter the illness, cannot prevent it to start with. Yes, they can have world class treatment, but they, it could not prevent them from falling ill to start with. You need, uh, you need, you, you, for example, something goes wrong with your house. So you have needs, you have few needs, yes? Um, and therefore, man can never be self-sufficient. Uh, Naam. A lofty state of wealthiness, we spoke about that actually, Naam. But there are some among the creation whose uh, needs are loftier than their material needs. Those who need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek His pleasure alone. Those are the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them that contentment and satisfaction and the wealth of the heart which is, uh, which is to need very little from the dunya and not place their hopes on others. Tayyib. And Imam al-Ghazali he says, yeah, we can get this, get through it. Yeah. And Mamzali he says, it's inconceivable, but it is inconceivable that the one who is made free of want should become rich absolutely as a result of his being enriched. For at the very least, he, rem he remains in need of the one who enriched him. So he spoke first about uh, being rich figuratively, meaning that you have needs, but you have everything that you need. But you having needs and having everything that you need that, and having everything that you need does not make you no longer need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the, the, the materialists who turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assumed that when their material needs are fulfilled they're no longer in, in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he said it's inconceivable that you would no longer need the one who enriched you to start with therefore he is not truly rich rather it is true that he can dispense with everyone but Allah. So I can do without everyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In view of the fact that Allah supplies him with that which he needs and not in view of the fact that his basic neediness has been removed. Because you're still in need. And your basic neediness is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why... Uh, uh, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى And he found you, meaning the Prophet وسلم, and he found you poor and made you rich. Tayyip, does that mean that the Rasul no longer lead, needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's rich? That's inconceivable. It's inconceivable. So our basic neediness still exists. The third meaning of al-ghani is the one who has many possessions and that's what uh, is referred to uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That meaning is referred to uh, in his words, وَمَنْ كَانَ غَنِيًّا فَلْيَسْتَعْفِفِ Speaking about the, the carer of the orphan who's allowed to take a salary from the orphan's wealth. A salary if he 
um, he or she, of course, uh, invests, uh, invests that child's money and, and, and grows it, they're allowed to take a salary. But Allah said, And whoever is rich should modestly abstain. Okay? It's not, uh, it's not an absolute imperative, but it's a strong recommendation. Okay? But here, the ghina, uh, wealth, uh, I that's, uh, uh, that's been referred to, the meaning is, the meaning, uh, is material wealth, having many possessions. The, the third meaning of al ghani is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we said na'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the one in whose hands is all of the uh, treasures of uh, the heavens and the earth and what is beyond. Now Imam al-Ghazali, uh, Imam al-Ghazali he says that al-mughni, uh, or al-ghani, sorry, al-ghani and al-mughni is the one who is not dependent upon anyone else in respect of his essence or the attributes of his essence. Rather, he is exalted above any connection with others. So he sees Al-Ghani as, uh, uh, Al as the one who is above connection with others. We're connected to everything. We're connected to the weather. If it's cold, we need to put on a jacket. We're, uh, uh, we're connected to our, to, to our, to our body. We're connected to a body, right? That body ails, that body gets hungry, gets thirsty, needs rest, needs medicine. There are many needs. Uh, we're connected to other people. Uh, we're connected to our spouses. And any connection with others, any connection uh, implies need. Connection implies that there is need. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above need. So he's above any connection with others. His existence is not affirmed is, is not, um, his existence is not predicated on the affirmation of anyone or anything. His existence, he's self-existing uh, and self-subsisting and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require for anyone to affirm his, uh, to affirm that, to affirm that about him. And that's why he says, لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أتقى قلب رجل واحد منكم ما زاد ذلك في ملكي شيئا. الله سبحانه وتعالى he said, O my servants, even if the first amongst you and the last amongst you, and even if the whole of humankind and the jinn became equal in تقوى like the man of a sing like like the heart of a single person amongst you, meaning that they all shared the highest level of faith. Of the person among them, the person of the highest faith among them, they all shared that that level of faith and taqwa. That would not increase Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Would not add to His kingdom, because the kings of this world, they need loyalty. Not just subjects. They need they need loyal subjects. The 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 the, the more loyal subjects there are, the greater that king's kingdom is. That adds to their kingdom, it adds to their authority, it adds to their power, it adds to their influence, it adds to their reach. Yes, uh, 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 they, 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 they are obeyed, okay? And so it adds to, this, to their security as well, that they're secure within their kingdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above any connection. He's al ghani he is rich, he's in no need of any connection with anything for his essence or for the attributes of his essence, Jalla Jalalu. al ghani is mentioned in other verses in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said قَوْلٌ مَعْرُوفٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن صَدَقَةٍ يَتْبَعُهَا أَذَى وَاللَّهُ غَنِيٌّ حَنِيمٌ A kind word and forgiveness are better than a donation followed by hurtfulness. For Allah is al ghani self-sufficient forbearing and, and halim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you to give a charity that you'll follow up with uh, harmful words to the recipient. Because we were in need of giving the charity to purify our wealth first and foremost, okay? And to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But a charity which you will give and then lord over the person for having given it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't need that. He's, in, he's free of need. So you, you don't, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't owe you anything. He said, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ And due to Allah from the people is a pilgrimage to the house for whoever is able to find thereto a way. But whoever disbelieves, then indeed Allah is free from need of the worlds. You want to come to Hajj? As we mentioned in the reminder. You want to come to Hajj? أَهْلًا وَسَهْلًا مَرْحَبًا You're welcome. You don't want to come to Hajj? 
your loss. Your loss. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَرَبُّكَ الْغَنِيُّ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ This is amazing. And your Lord is free of need, the possessor of mercy. Despite Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not needing anything from anyone, he's merciful with us. And that is, and, and, and that is perfection. <laughs> to be kind and generous and merciful while expecting nothing in return. Because in reality, most people are kind and generous and merciful because they expect something in return. It is a transaction. Even if they expect, they expect contentment and peace and comfort in their own heart. It's done for something in return. It's always done for something in return. It's done for Allah. So there's something in return. Allah is Al Ghani, He's the rich and He's merciful. These two together, if we if we reflect on it, we, 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 we would just, you know, we would just we would just melt in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't need us, yet he's merciful with us. We talk about being merciful with the environment and the climate and Allah and the, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa you know, merciful with man and the jinn and the animals and the and, and the and, and the environment and the plant world and everything. We speak about that, uh, about that, that mercy, but it's for something in the end. It's because we have been charged with vicegerency, stewardship over the earth. And if we fail, we'll be punished. If we, uh, uh, sorry, if we, if we neglect our duty, not if we fail, because we can try and fail and we're rewarded, okay? Uh, and, uh, and, we c and the, 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 the objective can be achieved and, and there will be success without us because we neglected it and then we're punished, okay? And so neglect, neglecting it means that we'll be punished. Dis discharging of our duty means that we're rewarded. So there's always something in return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, he's ghani, he's rich and he's merciful. So I he's telling you, first of all, I don't need you. I, I, I didn't need to create you. Because your creation is not company for me. I wasn't lonely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasn't lonely and then created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't need some, uh, somebody or, 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 or creation to affirm his existence. It's out of our realm of, of, of uh, conceptualization to know why Allah created us. Okay? So he tells us he's rich and then he tells us I'm merciful though. Because the creation from among them are those who will say, I don't need you. And so, it's, it's a statement uh, uh, outlining that they are going to be mean and they're not going to be nice to you, <laughs> right, straight away. I don't need you means I don't have to be nice to you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, tells everyone, I, I don't need you, but I'm merciful. And my mercy wasi'at kulla shay, wa rahmati wasi'at, and my mercy encompasses everything, ya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, grant us his mercy. He said, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ No well. قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا سُبْحَانَهُ هُوَ الْغَنِي They have said, Allah has taken a son. Exalted is he. He is the one free of need. We need sons and daughters because they are an extension of us. And we've been created with, with a desire for immortality. And knowing that we won't, uh, we won't achieve immortality in this life. We are immortalized through our children. They're our legacy. They're our legacy. They carry our name. They carry our, uh, our, our DNA. Okay. Uh, and through them, through our children, we, we live out our dreams as well. We compensate for our shortcomings. So not only are our, our children an extension of us, they complete us and they complete what, for us at least, you know, for parents, parents try to <coughs> compensate for a shortcoming or for a deficiency within them. So for example, somebody who never received an education, make sure that their child receives an education. Somebody who uh, worked for other people their whole lives, make sure their son, you know, is a, it, it, you know has their own business, an entrepreneur, don't work for anyone. Why? Because they, 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 they saw, they saw uh, you know, they, they don't want their children to repeat their mistakes. Okay? 
And, and so we need, our and we need our children to care for us in our old age. It's that simple. <laughs> we need them for company as well. You see like a, you know, a, a couple who can have children. We're talking about couples who can have children. Okay. Yet they don't. There's something missing. Because the objective of them marrying was to have children. Not to, uh, 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 the, the objective is not, uh, is not to fulfill, is not only, is not only to fulfill a, um, an innate uh, uh, attraction to one another, okay? Uh, but there has to be, a re there's a result to that, f to that fulfillment, to that, uh, uh, to, the, to, to pleasing your, your carnal and animal desire. Because the animal only does so to have offspring. Yes? So there's something missing. The children bring come. You see grandparents. Grandparents, the, you know, gra uh, grandparents, they, they get 10, 15 years younger when, they're, when their grandchildren come home. You know? They're just revitalized. Right? They're just, you know, uh, 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 filled with energy when, when their grandchildren come home. So we need children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, uh, they have said, Allah has taken a son, exalted is he, he is above, uh, he's free of need. Why, why does he say, subhanahu al ghani? He doesn't need a son. All of the theories, ya Allah, it makes, you, it, it, it makes your head spin to try and justify why God took a son. Right? Uh, the claim anyway, that God took a son. And I've, I've yet to find somebody who's genuinely convinced by any of these claims or any of these justifications. وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ And whoever strives only strives for the benefit of himself. Indeed, Allah is free from need of the worlds. So don't count your, uh, uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. You striving in the cause of Allah, you striving in your religion is for you. وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ And whoever strives only strives for himself. Not for Allah. You're not going to add to Allah's balance, okay, of believers. You're not going to add to his kingdom. So don't count your worship, uh, your worship as a favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, the favor has been conferred upon you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having guided you to Islam. Allah says, Wallahu al ghaniyu wa antum al fuqara. Allah is the rich, the free of need, while you are the needy. Now, this is not. This is not, you know, when we say we are poor, it does, we're not saying that out of modesty. We are genuinely poor. We are genuinely in need. Because it doesn't matter how rich you are, your wealth, as we said, your wealth cannot prevent something. You're rich, now you have a blood clot. What do you do? You have a stroke. What, what can you do? What can you do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a body Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a body, He has enriched us with a body and we're going to talk about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, from al um, the meanings of al-mughni, of the enricher, is that He's enriched us with our form. So Allah enriched you with a form and you don't have to pay anything for it. You don't have to pay for your kidneys to function. But if your kidneys fail to function and clean your blood and remove the toxins, you have to go for dialysis. And alhamdulillah, we have the NHS. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the NHS. We're supposed to make dua for these, for these things, right? Okay, oh, I, but they're kuffar. Yeah, but the kuffar who come to your aid, uh, put out the fire in your house, and take you to the hospital and treat you. Right? It's, 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 uh, some people are just nuts. Some of you are just angry. Uh, they, they don't know what to do with that anger. Okay? And may Allah protect the NHS. And may Allah bring us rain from the sky. We're in a drought. We're in a drought. And everyone is suffering. And you know what? It's the poorest people who are going to suffer. Because rich people live like next to lakes or whatever. And they're going to siphon water away you know, from these lakes anyway. We, we all know that. Okay? And they have their... Uh, in any case. So we should make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring down rain from the sky. Because it's for everyone. And it's for the animals and for the plants. And, and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, And if not for the animals, uh, if not for the animals, the rain would not come from the sky. Why? Because our sins push away, push away rizq. Our sins push away rizq, provision. But Allah is so merciful that uh, 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 um, by account or uh, on account of the animal's needs, He gives us. Because they need. 
and they've done nothing wrong. So why should they be punished by, uh, uh, because of our sins? Yes? So now that you have, uh, may Allah yani, protect us, okay, but in a country without the NHS, without you know, national, a national health service, you have to pay for dialysis twice a week. And what if the dialysis machine stops working? Bring in the engineers, bring in a replacement or whatever. And yet there you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you perfectly operate, uh, you know, perfectly functional uh, kidney, uh, perfectly functional organs everywhere. Okay? Allah enriched you with that. You didn't buy it. You're genuinely in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're all genuinely in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, <coughs> so Al Ghazali he said, as far as losing this need is concerned, this does not occur. We're always in need. But when, but when one has no need for anything except Allah, one is called rich. That's true ghina. When you don't need anyone except Allah. Meaning you're, meaning I'm happy with, with you know, with what, what little I cover my back with, what little I fill my stomach with, what little I shelter myself with. You're content with that. And that's not your, that's not your pursuit. But when one has no need for anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one is called rich. But if, uh, na'am, oh, we'll skip that bit now. Type. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, also from His name's uh, Al Ghani, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ And whoever turns away, then indeed Allah is free of need, the praiseworthy. And we, we mentioned this uh, after Asr. Sometimes a person might you know, decide to go on the straight and narrow. So many years in sin, and then you know, uh, transforms their life and starts going to the mosque and making good friends and attending classes, and watching you know, classes online for shuyukh and dua and khutbahs and reminders and this and reading booklets and reading, you know, uh, and reading actual books as well. And then falls out with somebody in the mosque or somebody wrongs them somebody wrongs them and then they say i'm leaving your mosque that's it and in uh, and in their fury they say i'm not praying again i'm not praying as though their vengeance is against allah what did allah do to you what did allah do to you so sheikh nabulsi hafizahu allah may allah preserve him still with us alhamdulillah may allah preserve him he said if you were in medical school and you're going to graduate and become a doctor and open a surgery of your own and you know it's a future proof recession proof job by the way because people always fall ill and people always need uh, treatment huh? you're going to make a good income and a good living would you jeopardize that all because you fell out with somebody somebody wronged you one of your colleagues uh, wronged you in, uh, in, in, in medical school? Of course not, that is, that is foolishness. That's the epitome of foolishness. Even if the dean of the university, the dean of the college wronged you, you wouldn't leave. You wouldn't leave on their account. Why? Because I'm not gonna jeopardize my future. Taib, would you jeopardize your akhirah because somebody did something to you? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ And whoever turns away, Allah is rich. He's free of need and he's praiseworthy. I didn't need you to start with. You needed me and I guided you. And that's the greatest of uh, uh, the, the, the greatest uh, the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can enrich us with is, is guidance, as we'll see. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al mughni the enricher. He enriches whomever he wills to enrich, with and without means. And we spoke about that earlier. And so he can give people sufficiency, meaning that they don't ask, uh, they don't need to ask other people for anything uh, and in that regard he enriches some people more than others, of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, if he provides for you all of your needs, he's honoured you because you don't have to ask other people that's really an honour it's an honour and a trial of course, because who do you owe it to? who do you owe your uh, your your, your your sufficiency to. If you owe it to yourself, then you have rejected Allah's blessing. And that's kufrun ni'mah, the rejection of the ni'mah. But if you owe it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's gratitude. 
and those who are grateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases them. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And when your Lord, and recall when your Lord declared, if you, uh, if you uh, are grateful, then I shall increase you. So, the, uh, as they say, uh, you know, قَيْدُ uh, النِّعْمَ شُكْرُهَا To hold on to the blessing, uh, holding on to the blessing is done through praising and, gra- and, 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 uh, and, uh, and showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. And, but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you in need of, uh, leaves you to be in need of others, meaning that you call on others rather than calling on Him, that's the, uh, that is true humiliation. طيب. The conventional meaning, as we know, of, uh, um, uh, of, uh, of igna, uh, of enriching, meaning means to enrich with material wealth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did refer to that uh, in, in, his, in His glorious book. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ عَيْلَةً فَسَوْفَ يُغْنِيكُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنْ شَاءً And if you fear privation, uh, poverty, يعني, Allah will enrich you from His bounty if He wills. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the, the, the believers to not, allow <coughs> to not allow the polytheists into Mecca anymore to perform tawaf or to perform hajj, okay? Uh, because of their, their, their pagan practices and now it is a land of pure monotheism and pure tawheed but it was a big business no, Hajj is still a big business okay uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala t- uh, uh, tells the believers don't worry Allah will provide enrich you from his bounty if he wills okay uh, but let them who find not the means for marriage, abstain from sexual relations until Allah enriches them from His bounty. And uh, some of the some of the the mufassirun of the Quran, they say until Allah enriches him uh, from His bounty, enriches him by giving him the means for marriage, and enriches him meaning that the wife he's enriched by by having a wife because the wife is the greatest fortune. Uh, as the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, the best provision for the believing man is a believing woman, and of course, the other way, can, uh, you know, it works the other way. The best provision for the believing woman is the believing man. So it, so you're enriched by provision. So the two, uh, uh, the two, uh, you know, the two meanings correspond. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says, wa anahu huwa aghna wa aghna, because al al mughni is not mentioned explicitly in the Qur'an, but its derivations are. وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ أَغْنَى وَأَقْنَى And it is he who enriches and suffices. وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى And he found you poor and made you self-sufficient as we know. <coughs> From the other meanings of Al-Mughni which we uh, touched upon is that he gives us what we need and guides. What we need meaning he gave us our forms. First, the first thing we need is a body. And that's why he said Jalla Jalalu. Uh, uh, he, meaning Musa, said to Pharaoh, Our Lord is He who gave each thing its form and then guided it. And subhanAllah, I, I, I was, you know, I was thinking about that. And we got a cat on Friday. Uh, so I thought, subhanAllah, she, it's tiny, yani, uh, you know, a kitten. It's not really a cat, it's a kitten. But subhanAllah, its, it's natural instincts are instilled within it. Allah gave it its form, a body that is acrobatic and athletic and flexible uh, and fast and, and, uh, and, and, and fit uh, and amazing reaction speeds and, and coordination. But you know, there are people who have, because we're different to the animals, we have to be taught. Although we have instincts, we have instincts, for example, the, the newborn will latch onto the mother and, and feed, okay? No one, t- no one taught it that. But no one taught, you know, but we need to be taught how to run and how, to, we can, no, we're not taught how to run and walk, but we need to be taught how to do sports and how to do this and how to do that. But the animals don't need to be taught anything. I mean, that's not strictly true, obviously, you know, it, within the, 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 you know, um, um, you know, apes and, and uh, apes and monkeys are different because they live in communities and, and they are taught. Mothers do teach their daughters and the males do teach the, the younger males. Uh, but they have instinct. The point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them and guided them. Allah guided that cat to catch every pesky mouse that tries to get into the house. That's the whole point of getting it. Okay. And subhanAllah, it gives you confidence. Uh, it's going to 
it's going to deter any, any, you know, any rodent from trying to get in. طيب. Uh, Imam al Qushayri, he says, the enrich, uh, al- the enrichment from Allah, the enrichment uh, is of two natures. Allah enriches, Allah enriches some people. Allah enriches with wealth and its, and its flourishment. And that is for the awam, that is for the lay people. That's for the, the, the masses, that's for the masses. And Allah enriches with the purification of the state. And that is for the elite. Not elite, the people who can afford houses in Knightsbridge. We're talking about the elite, the elite of the, the elite of the believers. And so this is the true ighna, the true ghina and the true uh, enrichment. The best enrichment and the true wealth is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants his servant guidance and righteousness. And just as we mentioned downstairs, you know, we could have been from those who are worshipping cats and dogs and, and, uh, and worshipping idols and, 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 and cows and and rats and uh, the sun and the moon but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us and there is no greater enrichment than to be uh, than, to, than to receive guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why is this the greatest form of enrichment uh, why is this the, the real wealth why is this the real wealth I want to remind us of uh, something we, we spoke about maybe actually years ago uh, that wealth what is wealth except the means for purchasing our food, our drink, our clothing, our, our shelter, uh, you know, as homes? That's all wealth is. And that's why Imam Ghazali, uh, rahimahullah, he says that money, for he, he says money is but a means. It's not the end. Money is a means. It's an intermediary. Because if we could attain, if we could attain food and drink and clothes to cover our backs with and homes to shelter ourselves with, if we could attain those things without wealth, we would do without it. Because he considers there to be no inherent value to wealth. And he includes gold and silver. Okay? That they have no inherent intrinsic value or benefit. Of course, we know that they have intrinsic value because they're precious metals, they're brilliant conductors and a whole, you know, a load of other properties which we need today for every single device that we have. Okay? Electronic device. Uh, or at least, you know, the good ones anyway. Okay? But <coughs> they have, as he says, wealth, wealth in general, okay? If we, we, wealth is just an intermediary, okay? And so what if, what if we, could, we could eat and drink and shelter ourselves without, without the need for money? Then we don't need money. So the real wealth is the wealth that lasts. The real wealth is the wealth that lasts, and that's guidance. Because our needs are stated by Allah, those needs by the way, are stated by Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Adam what he would receive in Jannah, he said to him, Inna laka alla tajua fiha wa la ta'ara. Indeed, it is promised for you that, it is promised for you not to be hungry therein, meaning in paradise, or be unclothed. Wa annaka la tazma'u fiha wa la tadha. And indeed, you will not be thirsty therein, or be hot from the sun. Food, clothes, shelter. Food, clothes and shelter. Guaranteed for us in paradise, tell you. The food in paradise, the taste lasts for an eternity. The taste doesn't fade, doesn't wear away. That, that's the quality of, of, of the food of paradise. The, the taste doesn't fade. And, and when you eat th- something, that taste also will be added to the previous taste and it will not fade for an eternity. Uh, the, the clothes that you wear, they don't wear out. The homes that you live in don't need maintenance. So the true wealth is that which lasts. Is to be in a place where there, is no, there, are, no, there are no worries. <laughs> there is no insecurity. There is no fear. There is no paranoia. Wealth in this life also acts as a safety net. But it's also a safety net to just give us what we need in case our current income stream uh, dries up. So even that safety net, that safety net is for what? It's not so you can splash out. It's to know that if, if I'm no longer, if I, if I lose my job, I have something to fall back on. Fall back on so that I can eat, drink, 
put clothes on my back, and put a roof over my head. So even the safety. So in this life, wealth gives you some a level of security. In Jannah, you in Jannah there is no insecurity. There's no fear. There's no worry of poverty or anything. There's no worry that somebody will say, you know, some wealth is to get yourself a house in a nicer area as well. Why? Because you have, <coughs> you have noisy neighbors and, and nuisance neighbors and you want to get away from that. You want to go to people a bit more sophisticated, a bit more high class. Yeah? People more considerate. And normally, more educated people, more, as we said, uh, you know, more educated people with a higher level of income, uh, uh, generally more sophisticated and generally more community orientated. Okay, and so wealth gets you up. Wealth you gets you a nicer house in a nicer area. Why? 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 What's the point? Because you want secure. You don't want to live in an area full of crime. Okay, uh, and you want to have people who say nice things to you. You don't want to live in an area where people have nothing but but nasty things to say. Neighbors, you know, uh, 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 neighbors arguing and fighting and shouting and swearing and and people, you know. And, and people accusing you of things and, you know, you left this outside my door and, and fight with your neighbours. That's what we're escaping with, with money. Jannah has that all. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما They hear no foul speech or تأثيما or commission of sin. إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما Except, and the only speech uttered will be peace, peace. That's it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to grant us peace in this life and in the next. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enrich us <coughs> from his bounty, to enrich us with knowledge and to enrich us with guidance. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, enrich us with uh, what we need to, uh, to attain his happiness. Uh, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, expand our chests with, uh, with, uh, with beneficial knowledge and aid us and, and guide us to act upon that knowledge. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alam.